welcome to Easy Gluten Free. Today I'll be showing our friends at ThieveDiets.com how to make a copycat version of the Almond Joy Bar. Now while the original uses milk chocolate, this version uses a darker variety since darker chocolate has more antioxidants and less fat and sugar. I've also used a smaller amount of the coconut center while adding a bit more chocolate. But don't worry, each bar still has two almonds since we all know almonds are good for you. Now to make these we're going to need 14 ounces of sweetened condensed milk, 1 half cup of confectioner sugar, 1 half cup of cornstarch, 1 tablespoon of vanilla, 14 ounces of sweetened flaked coconut, 24 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips, 3 tablespoons of vegetable oil, and 72 almonds, or however many you'll need to put two on each piece of candy, depending on how you cut them. Now first, line a 7 by 11 inch pan, or something close to that size, with plastic wrap sprayed with nonstick spray. Empty the sweetened condensed milk into a large bowl, and stir in the sugar, cornstarch, and vanilla until it's very smooth. Then stir in the coconut and mix it well, then spoon the mixture into the prepared pan, and press it down with the back of a spoon. Then give it a light spray with non-stick spray and cover it with a second sheet of plastic wrap. Now firmly press it down with a spatula to pack the mixture in more tightly. Then put the pan into the freezer to firm up for an hour. When it comes out, peel off the sheet of plastic, then invert the pan onto a cutting board lined with parchment paper. Remove the pan and the second sheet of plastic then using a large chef's knife, cut straight down into the candy. Don't use a sawing motion. Spraying the knife with nonstick spray can help to keep the knife from sticking. Also, lightly marking your candy with a knife before you start helps you get more even pieces. Mine was cut into 36 pieces or 6 by 6. Now melt 4 ounces of the chocolate by microwaving it on high for 1 minute and then stirring until smooth. Dip the almonds into the melted chocolate and stick two almonds on each bar. The chocolate acts as a glue. Once you're finished with this step, you might want to recut the lines prior to placing the candy back into the freezer for another hour to harden up. When it comes time to melt the dipping chocolate, place the remainder of the chocolate into a large heatproof bowl and put it on top of a pot with an inch or two of simmering water. Stir the chocolate as it melts, then add the oil one tablespoon at a time, continuing to stir until it's smooth and well incorporated. For dipping the candy, you can either use a fork or a candy forceps. You can make your own candy forceps by breaking off the two middle tines of a plastic fork. Slide a butter knife under the candy logs to make it easier to remove them from the parchment paper. Now place one log onto your fork and lower it into the chocolate. Then spoon some chocolate over the top. Allow the excess to drip off. Then slide the candy onto a baking sheet or cutting board lined with wax paper. Now here's a quick tip. Whenever I'm dipping things in chocolate, I like to err on the side of caution and melt a little extra chocolate to make sure I don't run short. This usually results in some leftover melted chocolate. I like to have some dried fruits or nuts available to stir into the leftover chocolate and make a quick candy bark. You basically just stir in whatever you've got laying around and pour it onto some parchment paper, then cut it up once it's hardened, and you've got a second healthier treat. But now I've digressed. Continue on with the same method until the entire batch is coated. Now at one point I thought it might be cool to dip some of the candies only on the bottom, but after my daughter protested the idea, I went back to the original method. When you have the entire batch of candy done, chill them for an hour and they're ready to serve. And these almond coconut treats will bring you joy indeed when you sink your teeth into the updated version. With more dark chocolate and less sugary filling, I'd say they're better than the originals. Now make sure that you store the leftovers in an airtight container in the fridge with waxed paper between the layers to keep them fresh and looking good. And remember, if you'd like to see this recipe in print, you could always visit my blog. And for more free healthy recipes and tips for virtually any diet, visit my friends at favediets.com. See you again soon.